This is 7 National News and an Art Top Story. In the presence of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, and Xi Jinping, President of the People's Republic of China, an agreement has been signed to launch a $10 billion strategic co-investment fund, which will further strengthen the economic and political ties between the two nations. The agreement, which was signed during an official visit to China by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan and a delegation of ministers from the UAE, was signed by Dr. Sultan bin Ahmed Sultan Al Jabr, Minister of State, and Su Shaoshi, Chairman of the National Development and Reform Commission. According to local reports, since arriving on Saturday in Beijing at the invitation of President Xi Jinping, the UAE and China have signed nine agreements during an official reception for His Highness. Meanwhile, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and his delegation on Sunday visited China's Great Wall, one of the world's most famous landmarks in human history. He was accompanied by Dr. Amal al qubaisi Speaker of the Federal National Council, Lieutenant General Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior, and other Sheikhs, Ministers and top officials. During his visit, His Highness is holding a series of meetings to promote the development of friendly relations and strategic cooperation between the two countries, as well as discuss issues of mutual interest and regional and international issues. The UAE and China already see substantial trade, with China exporting $22 billion in 2014 to the UAE, making the country the top source of UAE imports. Bilateral trade stands at nearly $55 billion, making China the UAE's second largest trade partner, and trade is expected to surpass $60 billion this year. At a meeting chaired by Deputy Ruler of Dubai and First Deputy Chairman of the Dubai Executive Council, His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Dubai Executive Council on Sunday reviewed a number of development projects in the Emirate. The meeting approved Dubai's Carbon Abatement Strategy 2021. The strategy is in line with the vision of both UAE and Dubai to build an economic system with a low carbon footprint by launching initiatives that will help reduce carbon emissions by 16% by 2021. These initiatives are in line with Dubai Vision 2021 and Dubai Integrated Energy Strategy 2030. The meeting also approved the Government Services pricing, pricing Mechanism, a project proposed by Dubai the Model Center to enhance service efficiency based on customer needs. The mechanism enables government departments to calculate the actual cost of each service based on special KPIs. The Council also approved the activation of the amicable settlement of disputes as well as proposed amendments to maternity leave provisions in the government sector in a bid to enhance women's participation in the national workforce and the labour market. Second Deputy Chairman of Dubai Executive Council, His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Said Al Maktoum, also attended the meeting. The International Renewable Energy Agency has welcomed the landmark Paris Agreement on Climate Change adopted on Saturday in Paris by the 21st Conference of the Parties to the 1992 UN's Framework Convention on Climate Change. It described the agreement as a watershed for the global energy transition. According to Emirates News Agency WAM, the Director General of IRENA, Adnan Amin, was quoted as saying that in order to meet the ambition set forth in the agreement, accelerating the deployment of renewable energy deployment across all sectors must start now. He added that the commitments submitted by countries in their INDCs demonstrate the centrality of renewable energy in national strategies adding that renewable energy has made remarkable progress in the last decade. He also praised the private sector and other actors for making bold announcements which strengthened the meeting's solution-focused theme. IRENA will, will welcome global energy leaders at the sixth session of the IRENA Assembly in January 2016 to move the Paris Agreement to the next phase. The UAE Ministry of Health has announced price cuts of 142 innovative medicines as part of their sixth price reduction initiative with the new pricing scheme set to take effect in January 2016. While addressing a gathering of senior figures from pharmaceutical companies, medical experts and representatives of the media, His Excellency Dr. Amin Hussein Al-Amiri, the, uh, the Assistant Undersecretary of Public Health Policy and Licensing, announced that the reduction of prices ranged from 2 to more than 50 percent. 
It was added that a total of 24 pharmaceutical companies are taking part in this initiative, with a total of 80% of the products targeted set to witness a decline in their shelf prices. With regards to future plans, Dr. Al-Amiri stated that they will aim to reduce the prices of all 100% of the innovative medicines by June 2016, with the focus also expected to shift towards cutting the costs of generic medicines. Among the products, around 106 of the medicines are related to issues with the central nervous system, while Novartis was the company with the most price reductions for 24 of its products. According to Dr. Alamiri, the new prices should ease the concerns faced by those patients without adequate health insurance in the country. We send them a list to reduce their prices and the incentives were that we support them. We have an open door policy with them. We were the, uh, the uh, top uh, five countries worldwide to register the innovative uh, medicines which is being licensed by the FDA or EMEA in Europe, which it means that this is a great support for their investment and as soon as it's being approved there it will be registered in Emirates and they start their investment here to cover the need of the MENA region, which is Middle East, uh, North and Africa countries, that all their medications through their logistic hub, which the facilities has been provided to them through our government, will support their investment and support their presence here and to have the regional or international office for them here to cover the MENA region or internationally. And there, those incentives or those supports, as starting from regulations and the logistic support and the rest of the supports, allow those uh, pharmaceutical companies to come down with their prices and to give us the lowest price. The UAE Telecommunications Regulatory Authority, TRA, in collaboration with the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, and Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Smart Learning Program have announced an agreement to make the UAE a regional centre for smart learning in the region. At a press conference hosted on the sidelines of the Smart Learning Forum, rep members representing the TRA and the Ministry of Education along with other partners, announced that as the UAE becomes the hub for smart learning in the Arab world, it will be offered all the necessary help and resources for capacity building. Officials stated that their overall aim for having a regional centre is to ensure that smart learning initiatives penetrate all the regions of the Arab world. Meanwhile, officials representing the Arab League, Educational, Cultural and Scientific Organization, Alexo, stated that the, as the region enters an era of massive technological changes, it is still facing a lot of challenges when it comes to providing the right tools of education for their students. On the sidelines of the conference, Ministry of Education officials highlighted the efforts taken by the UAE for smart learning while adding that the country is ranked first in the region and ninth in the world in terms of efforts taken for implementing smart initiatives at schools. The ministry stated that it is willing to cooperate with regional and international partners to ensure that the next generation has access to the right tools and technology for smart learning. We are here participating in this uh, conference really to showcase our smart learning education through Ministry of Education. We are a partnership with the uh, Arab League organizations and to show the best uh, practice. In terms of uh, UAE education, we are open to share the learning and the guidelines of smart learning with our uh, private school uh, partners also. It's open and free so the platform is available and our aim is really to enhance the education overall in UAE. The smart learning or the technology is a tool if you use it properly you will make the uh, proper uh, enhancement of education. Uh, we can use it as encouragement for the students really to come and get engaged uh, with the classroom and teachers so there's a lot of uh, things you can do and you can innovate especially with the smart learning. There is many education challenges in the Arab world. That's, I mean, this, the, this, the, the, the education is not good as, as we know. Uh, and the pupils uh, finish their education with a low uh, average of, uh, of education. So we need to improve the, this, this uh, education for the for this, for the for the whole society, very good for uh, for make the the citizen, the Arabic citizen better, and to 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 to, to become with the with the new style of education, uh, we are as Arab, so with the new style of education as as the MOOCs, you know the MOOCs, 
That's mean the education with high, high, uh, high sources and for high uh, peoples ca can receive the education through the, the internet uh, easily. During the opening day of the three-day forum, various exhibitors, including members of the Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Smart Learning Program, briefed officials about the initiatives launched by their center to introduce new teaching methodologies. Officials highlighted that as more smart technologies are being introduced in various schools and colleges, the traditional divide between a student and a teacher does not exist today. During the forum, various educational institutions and technology companies showcased their smart solutions to educators and government officials, while also educating them about how smart learning will decrease the burden of students and teachers. Technologies are uh, now diffused all over. Uh, us kids have access to these devices. Uh, they are very comfortable using these tablets, as you can see. Uh, it's a new generation that, that is receiving information in a different way. So we need to bridge this gap. Uh, schools need to cope with this and speak their language. And this is what uh, Mohammed Barah Smart Learning Program is, is doing. We are trying to give them what book and pen cannot give them. Seeing video might tell them more than reading a book. And, and this is what we are trying to enhance and enrich the learning and teaching experience. This is basically what we are trying to offer. We offer also these tables, you know, these nice uh, uh, screens. We can make it as big as we can from Famacit and here at Bistec in UAE to be able to offer, you know, like different type of experience for the kids. You know, we play, uh, they play games, they learn uh, while playing the games. They have the tablets and the laptops where uh, they can use Office, PowerPoint, Excel, uh, like everybody is using now in the offices. So they learn about that even before they start going to, uh, to start working. And this is at a young age, you know, from grade one to grade uh, 12. So it helps them a lot to be able to, to, to be ready for the, for the future. The Roads and Transport Authority has announced that it has upgraded their automatic vehicle monitoring system by introducing a new technology that will enable ins instant monitoring of a bus's speed. According to Director of Transportation Systems, RTA's Public Transport Agency, the new feature is aimed at monitoring RTA's bus drivers who drive beyond the permitted speed limits, whether within the city or on an intercity route. It is also expected to assist in identifying drivers dri arriving ahead of scheduled times in order to ensure high compliance with the on-time performance. According to the RTA, the data collected will be published into three monthly reports for concerned departments about bus speed per route per hour, average bus speed on transport network and the speed, as well as transit time of ride riders from one point to another per hour. It was added that the system fitted to buses is linked to the control centre with an aim towards conserving the lives and properties. And finally, in our bulletin. With Dubai all set to host the Accessibilities Expo in February 2016, Rashid Centre for Disabled has revealed that more companies in the private sector across the UAE are keen to employ persons with disabilities. The Director General of Rashid Center for Disabled was quoted in a press statement as saying that they have experienced positive results due to the strong efforts from the UAE government, which had ratified the UN Convention for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in 2008. Following the agreement, it was added that more companies are now ready to hire persons with special needs, with many organizations and private companies approaching the center with vacancies for their students. Describing the Accessibilities Expo, which will focus on inclusion and empowerment, the Director General added that the event will be a catalyst for greater understanding and collaborative efforts towards improving the lives of the disabled in the region. Over 750 million people are estimated to have some form of disability, and 50 million of these are in the Middle East. It was added that providing gainful employment to the disabled is crucial to enhance the quality of their life empower them and encourage a positive contribution from them in the society.